you. Hey, this is what every job should start with. A big round of applause. Yeah. I, the one you were giving me was good enough. I just was saying, this is a great way to start your day. Instead of sneaking in the back because you're 10 minutes late. This is a much better way to start. I appreciate it now, though. I missed my first job. I didn't miss it then. I miss it now. I worked at McDonald's. That was my first job, that first crappy job. I liked it. Looking back now, great job. I made $6.40 an hour. And at the time, I had zero heating costs, zero insurance, zero alimony. It was a lot of money. <laughs> I got the job with that first crappy resume. That should be a tip-off. I was nervous it wasn't going to be good enough. That first, you know, that resume for your first job? What's on that resume? It was just my address in 20-point font. You give it double-spaced. Give your postal code its own line. Don't want them to get confused when they mail those huge checks. I was not qualified. I wasn't making food for myself at that point. Most kids at McDonald's don't make their own food. My mom would make me dinner, and then she would drive me to work, and then I would make dinner for the rest of the town. That's how, that's how little I was in on that. And I worked there during that sort of ghetto. I remember McDonald's kind of went through a bit of a ghetto period from 1970 to 2010. You remember that? <laughs> Just looked like a prison cafeteria was open to the public. Remember it kind of? But I will tell you, they're trying to do a good job. They try, but they just have people like me working there. So it can only be so good. We didn't care. So let me tell you something about McDonald's. I'm gonna give you some secrets on the food. You know that video of that person who bought that cheeseburger and they took it home and it didn't go bad? and you were outraged, you're wrong about being outraged. You should not have been mad. That's a good thing. You need that. You don't want a time-sensitive meal from McDonald's because you don't know when I made it. We didn't keep track. People are so mad that this food doesn't go bad. You bought this cheeseburger at 11.45 p.m. from three unsupervised teenagers. You want some kind of antibacterial chemicals in that burger, trust me. That hand sanitizer in that bun, that's for you. That's not for me. <laughs> We've been messing around. I couldn't tell you when we cooked it. If you don't like people who waste food, then good for us, because we didn't throw anything away. We kept it until it was time to sell it. That's how it worked. Ask anyone who works at McDonald's. There's a heat tray. It's like you, we pre-cook all the burgers, nine at a time, and then we put them in these little trays. You look like a microwave oven. You'd set them in there, and you'd boop, you'd set a timer for 25 minutes. And when that timer ran down, you had to boop, reset the timer, <laughs> and pretend you had fresh burgers. <laughs> Even I thought we had to cook new burgers that first shift. They went bad, and I'm like, do we have to cook new burgers? And some guy was like, why? Boop, we have fresh ones right here. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, that's why you're the manager. That's why you're the guy. <laughs> yep. Because you're smarter than me. Like, if I could do it now, I'd be great at that job. I care more. I think about the people eating the food, so I do a good job. I'm way more into washing my hands than I was back then. I'll do them two or three times a day sometimes. But I got out of it, because there's more money elsewhere. So I tried to stay in food service, and I worked at a restaurant. And that job, way worse. Serving people who are hungry is the worst job you can ever have because people are at their worst right before you feed them. <laughs> and as a server, I can only compare it to, I think, being a stripper. I don't know how else to describe it. But when you serve food in a restaurant, your feet hurt every night, you hate yourself, but you count your cash and you think, one more day. That's what keeps you going. <laughs> That's what serving in a restaurant is. Because you're bad to those people who are serving you food. You're so, you have demands. You tell them stuff and expect excitement from them. Hey, it's my birthday. <laughs> I don't know who you are. Yeah, but it's my birthday. Do I get free cake or a song? Who, from me? <laughs> I don't even know you. How do you know it's not my birthday? <laughs> you know, oh, sing to me, it's my birthday. No. But you had to. One guy I met didn't have to. It was the best thing I ever saw. He was a Jehovah's Witness, and he was a server. 
which doesn't get you much in the serving industry until it's someone's birthday. And then guess what? The only thing I know and you know about Jehovah's Witnesses are that they don't celebrate anything. They don't celebrate their own birthday. They're going to celebrate this jerk's kid's birthday. <laughs> and he told them that. He go, uh, it's my daughter's birthday. Do you sing or anything? And he said, no. I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I don't celebrate anything. And they were afraid to offend him. So they go, okay. Like we were on our sections going, what? From that day on, I was a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> I gotta go. My name is Graham Chinnon. Thank you.